Hello, story time friends. This is Tammy at the Pine River Public Library, and I have another story time here for you. And we are going to visit the parks during this story time. Um, March 30th is National Take a Walk in the Park Day. So let's see all the fun ways we can enjoy the parks. Our first book is Biscuit Loves the Park. Biscuit, where are you? Here, Biscuit. We're going to play in the park, in the big park. I have your ball, Biscuit. Let's play. Wait, Biscuit, where are you going? Your ball is right here. Let's play. Oh no, there goes the ball. Biscuit, wait for me. This is a big park. Silly puppy, are you by the tree? Are you by the bench? Can you see Biscuit? Can you find him? Biscuit, are you over by the pond? Is he? Biscuit, where are you? Oh, you funny puppy. Now I found you. Oh no. Looks like Biscuit got all muddy. Here, Biscuit. Biscuit, I found your ball. But now where can you be? Where did Biscuit go? Biscuit? Are you by the merry-go-round? Biscuit, are you by the swings? This is a very big park, Biscuit. She almost had him by the water. Where are you? Do you think you found Biscuit? Looks like Biscuit is playing with some new friends. Oh, Biscuit, where have you been? I've been looking for you everywhere. Sweet puppy, I was trying to find you, but you found me instead and lots of new friends too. Now, let's play. All the puppies get to play together. Our next story is The Hike. Woohoo, we're almost ready. Just one more cut. Let me gather a few more feathers. They're going on one big adventure, aren't they? We're going on a hike. It's Bren, Elle, Hattie, and Bean the dog. Look at everything that they are finding on their hike. Up in the tree is a mountain chickadee. Down under the bush, there's a chipmunk. Flying around, there's a bumblebee. Look behind the big rock. Do you see the fox? Going on a hike is our favorite thing to do. 
Look at all the animals that they are passing. That chipmunk is up in the tree, along with the bird owlets, and a blue jay. Do you see the other leaves? There's a deer fern, Oregon grass, fairy ring mushrooms, all kinds of things to see on a hike. Hey, wait for me! Looks like somebody fell behind. Because in the beginning, we ran like maniacs, they said. Do you sometimes get really excited when you go for a hike or a walk and you just want to run? They were all excited until a ripe patch of thimbleberries slowed them down. Mmm, delicious. What else do you see in the picture? We have a Douglas fir branch hanging down. That chipmunk is still out there with Bean, the dog. Do you see the western toad sitting at the front of the picture? L teaches everyone how to make leaf baskets. And there is a picture on how to make her leaf baskets. It says find one big leaf with five tips. Poke the stem into the opposite leaf tip and tip by tip poke the leaf tips with the stem. Wrap them all up and pack them with berries. Oh, everyone looks tired. I think we've eaten too many berries. Is that even possible? Hey, I thought we were saving some of our berries for later in the trip. What do we have here? Look at that woodpecker. He's made a lot of holes in that tree already, hasn't he? Going down the side of the tree are carpenter ants. We found some more mushrooms, turkey tail mushrooms, laying on the log. This hike gets steep and the trail starts to narrow. Who did they find now? A porcupine climbing a tree. <sighs> Hattie. How did we get up? How did you get up there so fast? Hattie, who was the one behind, is now in front of everybody up the trail. She must not have ate as many berries as everybody else, huh? And then, of course, they got lost. Everybody pulled out their maps. Hmm. Which way is Earth on this map? I'm pretty sure we were not supposed to cross a river yet. Do you see what little Hattie is standing on? Elle and Wren have found rocks to stand on, but what's Hattie standing on? That doesn't look like a rock to me. That looks like a turtle. Did we go left after the berry patch? No, I think we went right. So, let's go back to Wren's sketchbook because she can always help us find the route. And so she was drawing where they were going. Maybe she can get everybody on the right path. And in no time, we are back on track. Hey, look, guys, we're halfway there. Look at this track. Who do you think made this? Hmm. Now that's an interesting track. A deer walks past and Bean sneezes. Achoo! And the deer stops. 
I bet you that's whose tracks we saw was the deer. And the deer vanishes so quick that they wonder if it was even there. You have to be very quiet when you see a deer, don't you? A light rain comes and then goes. The birds are happy and we listen to them chirp and chatter in the trees. This is the river that we were looking for, right Hattie? Let's look at Wren's sketchbook. What has she drawn now? Those are some of the birds that they have found at the river. A hummingbird, mountain chickadee, a mountain bluebird. Hattie gets tired and Elle offers to carry her. Looks like we have 30 minutes to the top. We can't hear you. Why, why do you think they can't hear her? Probably because that waterfall. If you've ever been near a waterfall, they can be quite loud. You know who else is seeing them? A slug. Do you see the banana slug up on the rocks? And over in the corner, a raven is flying by. Soon, Elle is tired, too. I suppose Elle got tired if she was carrying Hattie. And now Wren is carrying both of them. Oh, I can't do this much longer, though, she says. And as they climb and climb, Wren says, the ride is over, and puts down Hattie and Elle so that they could walk on their own to the top of the mountain. Brr, it's getting chilly up here. At the top, Wren takes out her flag. Elle reads the poem that she has written, and Hattie releases the feathers into the wind. You see that everybody had to put on their jackets and their hats? The higher you go up on the mountain, the colder it can get. We did it. We made it to the top. That was one big hike, wasn't it? And now they have to do it all over again because they have to hike down the mountain and follow the trail back home. What? Who pooped in the park? So here is a fun story. We're going to take a trip to Glacier National Park. And I guess we're going to see who pooped in the park. What? Dad, I had to go to the bathroom. Michael squirmed in the back seat. We'll be at our campground in just a half hour, said Dad. We are now in Glacier National Park. He's just nervous, said Michael's sister. He thinks a bear's going to eat him. And she growls at Michael and made her fingers look like claws. Stop it, Emily, said Mom. Nobody is getting eaten by anything. Michael was very excited about the trip. But Emily was right. He was nervous. He had just read a book about grizzly bears. He knew how big they could get. He also knew that a hungry grizzly bear would eat just about anything. Maybe even a boy. I am kind of nervous and scared of the bears, admitted Michael. Don't worry said dad. We'll show you how to count a bear's toes and never get close enough to be scared. Here's our campsite. Let's set up the tent and then we can go for a walk. I'll show you what I mean, dad said. Michael was awfully worried about grizzly bear toes, but he tried not to show it. Let's hurry, said Emily. I want to see some animals. 
Once the tent was set up, the whole family went for a hike. Emily started to complain before they even left the campground. I haven't seen any animals yet. Maybe there aren't any here. What do you see hiding by the tree? Do you see the raccoon? There are definitely animals here, said Dad. We're going to learn about them from their scat and tracks. Scat, said Michael. What's scat? Scat is the word hikers and trackers use for animal poop. Mom said, look over here. What did Mom find? Footprints, said Michael. And something else, added Mom. Beaver scat. It looks like little pieces of wood, said Emily. Beavers usually poop in the water, so you won't find beaver scat very often. Beavers gnaw on the wood all the time, said Dad. Their scat has a lot of wood chips in it. They use the trees to build their dams and the lodges that they live in, said Mom, and they eat the bark. The scat tells you what they eat, said Dad. Now look at the tracks. So let's look at this beaver track. Their back feet are webbed, which makes them very good swimmers. And you can see how big the tail is where it dragged along. Right here, said Mom. The tail helps them swim too. See, Michael, said Dad. We don't have to get up close to an animal to learn about it. Instead, a close encounter of the scary kind, we'll just have a close encounter of the poopy kind. Everyone laughed and Mom made a gross out face. Dad, Mom, look over there. I found bunny scat, yelled Michael. It's just like we have in Fluffy's cage. We came all the way to Glacier National Park for that grumbled Emily. Michael's bunny makes plenty of poop at home. That's not from a rabbit, said Mom. It's from a deer. Right, bunny poop looks like little round balls, added Dad. Deer scat looks more like jelly beans. So, rabbits actually eat their own droppings. This let them eat the same food twice to get all the nutrients from it. The little rum balls are the scat that's already been through twice. So if you look on the top, we have two different types of deer scat. One is more the summer and spring, and the little balls that kind of look like the jelly beans, that's what they will poop out in the winter and the fall. And down in the corner, the circle ones that look kind of like Cocoa Puffs, um, that is rabbit scat that has actually been through twice. So they've already pooped and then ate it and then pooped it out again so that they could get all the nutrients out. And then of course the colorful ones are jelly beans. Those we can eat. Are these deer tracks? Michael asked. Yes, said Mom. See how they have split hoofs? Cool, added Emily. She was starting to get interested now. But what are these marks? Hmm, what do you think those extra marks are on the deer tracks? Those are from his dew claws, said Mom. They're little claws behind the hoof. Dew claws sometimes show in the deer tracks if the ground is soft. So you see you have the hoof on the bottom, the main one that they walk on, and the dew claw behind. So if the ground is soft, that'll dig into the dirt and make the extra marking. Oh no, said Michael. Here's one of his antlers. Did a bear cat eat him? Michael looked around very nervously. No, 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 he's fine, said Dad. 
deer and elk shed their antlers every winter and then they grow a new bigger set the next year. This antler is from an elk. Female deer and elk don't grow antlers. Reindeer are the only members of the deer family where both males and females have antlers. This elk was in a hurry though, said mom as she studies the ground. Michael and Emily go over to look. How can you tell if the deer was in a hurry, said Michael. The hoof prints are very far apart, mom explained, and the back prints are in front of the front prints. He was walking backwards then? asked Emily. No, he was galloping. Something must have scared him and he was moving fast. Sometimes male deer bounce along with all four feet hitting the ground together. This is called stodding and pronking. So if you see the different prints, you can see we have galloping footprints, we have walking footprints, and then we have the stodding or the pranking, pronking footprints, excuse me. So that way, if you see the prints, you can tell if the deer was walking, if it was galloping, or if it was running. I think I know what scared him, Dad called, and the family hurried over to look. What do you think Dad has found? This is coyote scat, Dad said, and there are coyote tracks all around here. They look like dog tracks, said Michael. That's because coyotes are a member of the dog family, Dad explained. So coyote scat often has hair and bits of bones in it that their body just couldn't digest. Coyotes eat just about anything that they can catch and they steal leftovers from other predators too. You can tell what they've been eating by examining their scat. There were a lot of coyotes around here, said mom. See how the tracks are different sizes? Their den is probably nearby and they scared that elk. Do you think that coyote has got him? Michael asked. I don't think so, said mom, because look. And far across the meadow, they saw a family of coyotes lying in the sun. As they walked along the trail into the woods, Michael looked all over for tracks. Look everyone. I found another coyote track. That's not a coyote track, said Dad. It doesn't show any claw marks and the front of the big pad looks dented in. You found a mountain lion track, said Mom. Do you see the difference between the two? The little one is the coyote track and you can see the claws. The other one is a mountain lion track. Since cats can retract their claws, their tracks don't always show the claw marks. Because a coyote is from the dog family and a mountain lion is from the cat family. The only dog that doesn't show claw marks would be a gray wolf, or excuse me, a gray fox. Their claws are so small and sharp that they can climb trees like a cat. Let's look for mountain lion poop, said Michael. I don't think you'll find any, said Mom, but you can look. Mountain lions may be the biggest cat in America, but they still bury their scat just like a house cat. So a mountain lion goes to the bathroom just like your normal house cat would go to the bathroom. Wow! There's a huge pile right in the middle of the trail. That is not from a mountain lion. All you can see in it are vegetables and something that looks like oats, says Dad. Hmm, whose scat would have vegetables and oats in it? It's horse poop, 
said Emily. Right, said Mom. People ride horses out here. Let's see if you can find any tracks. Horses walk while they poop, but they stop and stand still when they have to pee. Michael found tracks all right, but they didn't look like he expected. That's an awful funny shaped hoof, he said. Horses don't have split hooves like elk and deer, said Dad. It's all just one part. He means the shoe, said Mom. Michael looked puzzled and Dad laughed. Horses that are ridden a lot have metal shoes to keep their hooves from wearing down. That is the track that you're seeing. What are these tracks over here? asked Emily. She was kneeling by a hole in the ground looking at some tracks. Dad took a closer look. Check out these long claw marks, kids. What did Dad find? Is it from a bear? Michael said with a shudder. <sighs> no, said Dad. These are badger tracks, and that's the hole that he lives in over there. Trackers rarely find badger scat because badgers usually poop underground. So in the hole that they live in, that's where they poop. All these animals poop so differently, don't they? His claws are huge, said Emily. Well, that's how he digs all the holes, said Mom. He uses those front feet and claws just like shovels and picks. Michael followed the tracks backward from the hole and spotted some big hoof prints. I found more deer prints over here. Those are not deer prints, Dad pointed out, because they're not as pointy as the deer prints and they don't turn in at the tip. Do you see the difference in the picture between the deer track and the mountain goat track? Right, said Mom. They don't show the dew claws either because they're from mountain goats. And there's a picture of the mountain goat scat. Look at how the mountain goat tracks are so much closer together than the deer tracks. Mountain goats usually spend the summer up in the high mountains, said Dad, but they can come down here too. Whoa, Dad, what happened to this tree? Did an animal do this? Something was sharpening its claws, said Dad. And if you look how high those scratch marks are, that's a pretty big animal. It's not just the animal that's big, said Emily. Look at the size of this poop. It looks like we found your grizzly bear, said Dad. Let's see what you learned today and how. what can you figure out about this bear? So he's taller than you and he has really long claws. Look at how tall Dad is against that tree and where the scratch marks are. That's a pretty tall bear. And he's been eating plants, said Emily, because there's no hair or bones in here. Good, said Mom. What else do you see? Grizzlies can eat just about anything. They like fish and many kinds of plants and roots and berries. Grizzlies hunt their own meat, but they often steal kills away from the wolves and other predators. They will sometimes even eat moss and insects. Bears really will eat just about anything. Here's his footprint, said Michael. It's huge. He has more toes than a coyote and his claws are longer than my fingers. I told you, you'd be able to count a grizzly's toes. 
So if you put Michael's hand next to that grizzly bear print, that is really big, isn't it? He rubbed off some of his hair on the tree, said Emily. It's really dark, but the tips are gray. Just like Dad's, smiled Mom. Please don't pick on me, Dad said. So hair with gray tips on it is called grizzled. It's the grizzled hair that gave the grizzly bear its name. As they ate dinner that night, everyone talked about how much fun they had. We didn't see very many animals, said Emily, but it sure seemed like we did. And I didn't get scared once, said Michael. So just by following their footprints and looking over their scat, it was almost like we found all the animals today on the walk in the park, didn't we? Well, that's our story time today, and we got to see how many different people enjoy a walk in the park. From Biscuit, going and playing in the park and finding new friends, to the girls who went on a hike up on the mountain, and a trip to Glacier National Park, finding scat and footprints of all the different animals. So what will you do on your walk in the park? Get out and enjoy it. Have a good day.